Hi, welcome to Team Mag for today's Facebook Live Mystery Tour. My name's Veronica and I'm part of the public programs and learning team. And today we have a really special behind the scenes tour for you coming up. First though, I'd like to take this opportunity to acknowledge and pay respect to the Tasmanian Aboriginal community, the First Nations community of Lutruwita, Tasmania, this island, as the traditional owners and continued custodians of the land. We are here today on Muanina land. History of what happened here, there are no Muanina people or their descendants left, but the Tasmanian Aboriginal community, the First Nations community, is still strong in Latruita, Tasmania, and I acknowledge and pay respect to the elders, past, present, and emerging. So today we're not in the museum, we're behind the scenes. Uh, so we are in the commissariat building, which is just above the cafe. And this is where our conservation labs are. So today we've got the very special opportunity to go in and meet Jenny, who's our senior painting conservator, and Lisa, who is our conservation technician. So let's head on in. Hi, Veronica. Hi, Welcome Jenny. to conservation. Thank Please you. come in. Thanks. This is um, one of the three conservation labs that TMAG has, and this is where we do our painting conservation work. Right. So please come in. Um, this is where I do most of my work. I have my conservation library space, and I always have the painting that I'm working on. Great. So can you tell us a bit about what you do here as a painting conservator? Sure. I look after the TMAG painting collection. So if you visited TMAG, you would know that we have many paintings in the galleries. Uh, we also loan out our paintings to other institutions and also to places like Government House and Parliament House. And then the majority of our painting collection is in storage, so there as well. Great, so I can see this. You've got a beautiful painting here. Can you tell us a little bit about what the process is for mm -hmm. conserving this painting, for example? Sure. Yeah. So this painting was a donation, and I loved it. Um, this is a portrait of Esther Dixon. She lived in Hobart in the 1840s, and her husband was a convict, so he was sent to Van Diemen's Land, and she and her children moved over to join him. And uh, this was donated by Elizabeth Trimble and she's one of the descendants of Esther and the painting actually ended up in Baltimore in the USA but Elizabeth decided that Esther belonged in Hobart where she lived and that's how it ended up here at TMAG. So the first step for me was to do a condition, well the first step, yeah, to do a condition report of the painting so to look at its condition and I had to unframe it and take photographs and just check that it's okay. So we can see that there's lots of cracks and things in the painting, but um, this one's actually quite stable despite that. Yeah, great. So after you've done the condition report, what's the next step usually? Okay, well, usually I would clean the painting. So uh, we use lots of uh, different tools to do that. Um, got some things over here to show you. So we use really soft brushes, like these ones are made in Japan, and we clean the, I would clean the front and the back of the painting. I also use a sponge to uh, get the dirt out, and you can see that this is something I've already used and how much dirt can come from a painting. Wow. And that dirt may not even have been visible when we looked at the painting. I also use makeup sponges as well. So that's the cleaning process. Great, and what if it has varnish on it? Like oh, I can yeah, see okay. this one here where you've got the restoration of Mrs. White. Yeah, so this is a painting in our collection that was treated. And as you can see, the varnish has yellowed over time. It's a natural resin and can yellow, and that's quite normal. And so the conservators removed the varnish and you can see what a difference that makes. And we'd use solvents to do that. and. Um, not all paintings need it, but a lot of older paintings that are varnished do need it. We can then re-varnish it with a new varnish, and this is something that I can make up in the lab, and it's synthetic and shouldn't yellow so quickly over time. 
Great. And can you tell us a bit about all these beautiful pigments that you've got here? Yeah, of course. So when a painting has a loss, it um, might need some filler. So we'd do that first. And then we would do some retouch. I would do retouching to integrate the loss back into the painting. So I can use pigments like these and mix it with the varnish that I made, or I can use a pre made paint. These are conservation grade paints. And the reason we use those is that they're not oil paints like the artist used, but they um, are removable. So I, you know, it can be changed later if it needs to be. Yeah, great. And are these little paint palettes that you've yeah, got Yeah, that's right. So that's an example of some colour mixing. And, um, you know, you can kind of compare it to the painting to make sure that you're getting the right colour. And pigments are, come from all different sources. Uh, traditionally, white was lead white and came from lead, but that's quite toxic. So now we tend to use... Uh, a synthetic pigment yeah so that's important too great yeah. and I've also noticed something else and it's startling startling on the table yes um, the what are they called the little knives oh the scalpels, scalpels. okay scalpels. so yeah sometimes paintings will have accretions we call them which might be fly spots or food particles on the painting and it can be easier just to flick that off so we would just kind of go like that and flick anything off the painting and that would be done under magnification. So I might use a microscope or a loop while I do that work. Wow. Yeah. So it sounds like you need quite a bit of artistic skill as well as scientific knowledge for this job, would you say? Yeah, that's yeah. correct. So it's important to understand the materials the artist used and also to understand how those materials interact with each other. So for instance, if you wanted to become a conservator and you're maybe even still at school, you know, subjects like chemistry and art would be wonderful to do. Um, I think it's really great to know that if you love art, there's careers out there that are really rewarding. And yeah, I studied art at school and, you know, learned about painting and drawing and they're really good skills to have. Yeah, great. And do you know of any specific courses that are <laughs> operating at the moment? Yeah, definitely. So there are two um, qualifications in Australia. One is at Melbourne University and one at Canberra University that you can study to become a conservator. And there are different types of conservation too. So I specialise in paintings and they are paintings on canvas or board. But say if you've seen a watercolour painting in the gallery, that's on paper and it would be done by our, our restored by our painting, our paper conservator. And then we also have objects conservator and then we're all supported by our conservation technician, Lisa. Lisa, great. So we're going to head next door now and meet with Lisa, who's going to talk to us a little bit about uh, framing. Let's head on in. Hey Lisa, how are you going? <laughs> I'm good, Veronica, how Great. are you? Good, good. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what your job here at Team Ag is? Yes, yes. Um, as Jenny said, I'm the conservation technician. Um, so my job, I guess, is all about supporting all of the conservation activities that we do here at Team Ag. Um, I'm, I'm involved in exhibition installation and deinstallation, things like um, environmental monitoring. And, and really just making sure that, that when we send, um, for instance, paintings off uh, to travel, that they're safe to travel and safe to be exhibited. So I, I deal a lot with the frames. Right, so this frame here, can you tell me a little bit about yes. it? Yes, yeah, this, this is the frame that belongs with Esther Dixon, who, who we just met. <laughs> Great. Um, but this frame is, um, it's a much later frame. It's been, we don't know what happened to the original frame, but this one, it might date from the 80s, let's say. It's a very simple frame. Um, and, you know, I'd follow a very similar process um, to Jenny, but simplified. Um, so, you know, we'd first of all um, do a lot of documentation and photography and map out um, what, where the damage is and what we need to do to, um, to kind of treat the painting. 
Um, so with this one, this is actually quite, quite a simple, there's not a lot of damage on this one, but I would try and consolidate all of these little losses that you can see on the edges. Um, th there's a bit of brittleness, so I might want to put some, uh, consolidate these losses with uh, various kinds of um, adhesives. Um, and then I would fill any losses in a similar way and, and then come to the surface at the end uh, and either use gilding or um, acrylic paints to kind of um, integrate the whole surface so it's all shiny and unified again. Beautiful. So basically, and make sure that, that everything's very secure in terms of how the painting fits. Yeah, great. And um, look, these frames over here are catching my eye. They uh -huh. look a lot like some of the frames we saw last week in the This Two yes. Shall Pass exhibition. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about these? Yes, well these, these are just sort of samples of corners, but um, last, last week you looked at a lot of portraiture. Yeah. Um, and the older portraits are often in these um, quite ornately gilded frames. Um, the materials that they used originally to, to make these ornamentations over time become brittle and crack and we might get losses and cracks that we have to fix. So simply to do that, I, I've actually prepared one earlier. <laughs> so this is a... A sample of, I think it's from a Tom Roberts frame. And for instance, if it, we might have a corner that's broken away or lost, we can, we can make a, a, a positive um, impression of the loss using silicon moulds. Um, it's basically a soft putty and you get a really good impression. Then I can get a positive impression of the loss using a, another different kind of material. This is just a, a kind of a resin. Then that is then placed into the, into the repair. And then the, the really hard work for me is to integrate that back into the, um, the gilding so that it looks natural. Yeah, that's the basic process for that. Um, there's a lot of cleaning um, involved with frames, a similar way to Jenny. We use um, brushes and the vacuum cleaner is a very good friend of mine. Um, and there's a lot of work in um, securing, making sure that the paintings are secure, they're not going to fall off the wall, yeah. they're not going to move in the frame. So we use a lot of different hardware, um, woodworking tools, um, different, these are more about the finishes, the waxes and the that's the gilding, a sample of gilding. Um, but a lot of the time we're preparing a painting to travel, we might need to put some glazing or a glass or acrylic into the front and backboards on the back um, so that they're safe to travel. Yeah, great. So frame is not just about uh, the, how the frame looks, it's also about um, making sure the painting is safe. Yeah, exactly. The artwork is yes. safe. Great, yes. and what about these clear liquids in here? Oh, they're just various uh, kind of fairly um, basic chemicals that we might use to clean the surface. So I've got things in there like, like ethanol and, and acetone and, and just water. Yeah. We use a lot of water, <laughs> deionized water. So once yep. again, you need to have a little bit of a scientific knowledge. Um, oh, yes, like yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, just basic. Um, it's much simpler, um, but, but really, um, fine motor skills are important in my job, so having those kind of art, um, problem solving skills, understanding um, collections I guess, understanding conservation ethics is really important because we're, we're dealing with the original objects and we don't want to be changing things too much. Yeah, um, yeah so lots of different um, practical skills that sort of um, mesh in with just having an overall understanding of yeah, conservation ethics and, and history and all those things I mentioned. Yeah. yeah. So is there a clear pathway into your role or is, is there not, a not exactly, or, not no. A, no, no, not in the same way. No. Um, most conservation technicians come through, well, like myself, through a visual arts background or uh, some kind of trades, um, woodwork skill kind of background. And then we learn um, mostly on the job um, under the supervision of a... Um, 
senior conservator and then we do courses and go to conferences and that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, having, having that sort of background knowledge is really important then for the practical skills. Yeah. Yeah, because it's a really varied job. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like you do a lot of very different things. Yeah. yeah. yeah we, we, it's actually a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> it looks a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Lisa. And thank you, Jenny, uh, for showing us around your lab. Um, thank you also, Kat, who's doing our filming. And thank you, you guys, for tuning in again for our Facebook Live Mystery Tours. We do do these every Wednesday at 12 o'clock, so we hope we'll see you again next week. Thank you.